Celicia and I very much regret that we were not able to be here last evening for what I know was a wonderful dinner and a good time. We had to return to Memphis where I preached the funeral service yesterday of a good and godly woman, faithful member of the church, but we wish we could have been here with you. I am constantly amazed by the enormous talent that is found in this congregation. In various ways it is displayed. When I go to the new edition and I, I see the talent of carpenters and painters, I'm impressed. And I personally appreciate the time and the energy that is utilized to, to build on to this building. And when we see things like that happening, it's, it's good. I know that whatever you do, whether it be in building on or maintaining this physical plant, or whatever is done that is spiritual in nature, investing in souls, and all these things are interrelated. You do these things for the glory of God. And whatever is done for the glory of God has to be done by faith. When we build, and it's the Lord's work, we're building by faith. Now this morning, Brother Austin, during the Bible class hour, talked about the importance of faith and mentioned several scriptures that are key to our understanding of faith. We know that biblically there are various definitions of faith. They're all in agreement. Likewise, those who have studied the Bible have given us some definitions of faith that are likewise good. Most commonly, we have heard it expressed, faith is taking God at his word. And I might add, acting in compliance with his divine will. I've always liked this little acrostic, faith, forsaking all, I trust him. That's a good definition of faith. And then, of course, Hebrews 11.1, 1, the clearest definition of faith that is found in the Bible. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is not a blind leap in the dark. It's built upon solid evidence. It's built upon a solid foundation. And so we often quote Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. One cannot separate faith from an understanding of God's revealed will. Paul stated in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. And so throughout God's word, there, there are recorded for us noble men and women who have lived their lives by faith. They've walked by faith. They have um, been approved of God because of their, of their faith. And because of this faith, they have accomplished much for the God of heaven. The just shall live by faith, the prophet Habakkuk wrote, and in which is recorded once again in Hebrews 10, is a prelude to God's hall of fame of faith, Hebrews 11. And those great individuals who are mentioned in God's hall of fame of faith in Hebrews 11 were ordinary in many ways, but they were also extraordinary. Perhaps the difference in their lives was that word extra. What makes someone uh, extraordinary is putting forth a little extra effort, extra ordinary. And so when you consider the, the men and women in God's hall of fame of faith, they were those who took God at his word and acted in compliance with his word. It's often been said that man's hall of fame and God's hall of fame are different, aren't they? And we respect what God says concerning 
those who walk by faith, and we want to be found in this generation as men and women, boys and girls who lived by faith, walked by faith, and did things for the glory of God because of our faith and our trust in Him. Now, those who have walked by faith are not limited to the biblical era, are they? Whenever you visit a congregation and you see a great work being done on behalf of the Lord, you can know this. While those who are present members no doubt are heavily involved in that work, they stand on the shoulders of those who came before them. And that's true with this congregation, isn't it? I appreciate all who are involved in this work right now, but we stand on the shoulders of those who've gone before us, don't we? People made sacrifices. People had a vision and wanted to do something that would bring glory to God. And so what did they do? They stepped out by faith. And so faith will not allow us to sit back and rest on our laurels and say, well, God, you sure must be pleased with what we've done in the past. There's nothing left to do. No, when you consider our great God, He's a builder, isn't He? He's always building something. Sometimes I'm asked, what will we do in heaven? Well, I do believe this, that when we get to heaven, we'll be involved in some kind of building program because wherever you find God, there's going to be something to be built. He is a great builder. And we recognize that as His children, as His, as his faithful servants, that our God wants us to accomplish work on His behalf. And therefore, we don't sit back and say our best days are in the past. We're always looking forward to the future. What else can we do to build up the kingdom of God? What else can we do that will bring more glory and honor unto His holy name? Faith, you see, demands that we ever press onward and press upward. And so this morning, I want to preach a sermon that I have entitled, building by faith. And I want you to go with me to that Old Testament book of Numbers, the same chapter from which Henry was reading just a moment ago, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, the fourth book of the Pentateuch. And we find that Moses has, has said to, or rather God has said to Moses, and Moses has spoken to the people, I want you to go and spy out the land. Now, God didn't tell Moses to go spy out the land because God didn't have an awareness of what was going on in the land of Canaan, that which was promised to his people, but rather it was a great test of faith. And so God uh, told Moses, choose 12 spies, one from each of the tribes, and go in and spy out the land. And then let these spies come back and reveal to you and to the people what is in the land. Now God has something in mind for His people. God wants His people to go in and take the land. And with God on their side, they can do it. But in Numbers chapters 13 and 14, we see how people often respond, even sometimes the people of God. And it shows a lack of resolve, a lack of, of faith. And we'll see it in this particular instance, where the people are impressed by what they find in the land. These 12 spies can tell you they're good things there in the land. It would be wonderful to be able to enjoy the fruit and the prosperity that's found in this land of Canaan, but as we shall see, the, the people hear the negative report of the spies concerning the power and the might of the people and they're not sure they can go in and take the land. As we consider that this morning, think about, about building by faith and the fact that God is the one that, that instructed spies to be sent out into the land 
And it is God who wants to know that His people trust in Him and know that He can accomplish much for them. And we shouldn't be surprised that God would want His people to go in and take this land of promise. Because when you see the God of heaven, He's always busy and He's always active. And we see that He's a great builder. Hebrews 1, 2, through Christ He made the worlds. Our God is a great builder. Colossians 1, 16, Christ Jesus is the one who likewise was involved in the creation of the world. But when we consider our great God, who is the architect and the builder of this vast universe, we would also note that the psalmist says, it is the Lord who builds up the home. Psalm 127, 1, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Jesus promised that he was going to build something. Remember that in Matthew 16, 18? Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And we read in Acts 2 that indeed on the day of Pentecost when, when the uh, crowd that gathered heard the gospel preached, and when they were convicted of their sins and cried out, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter told them what to do in verse 38 of Acts 2. And on that same day, verse 47, the Lord added to the church such as should be saved. And so it is that Jesus promised to build his church. And in Acts 2, we see that indeed that church was established. And Jesus is a great builder in another sense. You remember in John 14, this comforting passage, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. What a wonderful promise made by our Lord. Where is he now? Don't we love that beautiful thought? Preparing a home for us, building us a place in heaven. And so our God is a great, great builder. But here in Numbers chapter 13, we find that Moses selected one spy for each tribe. And uh, there were 12 tribes, and so 12 spies. Now, if you read this chapter, perhaps this coming week you will take a moment to read this chapter, you are going to find some, some interesting names among the spies. In fact, there are ten names that are hard to pronounce. I don't know of any young people today that, that bear the names of the ten spies who came back with a negative report. The only names that are familiar to me that have been given to, to boys today, and they're quite common, Joshua and Caleb. There is a reason we name our boys Joshua and Caleb is because of the courage they demonstrated on this occasion. You wouldn't want to name your boys after these fearful spies who lacked the courage to trust in God. They were faithless. But it's interesting to me that when you consider these spies, they went into the land and they were all, all 12 of them, amazed by what they saw. They were amazed by, by the fruit produced in that land. I mean, there was, there was a cluster of grapes and it took two men to carry back from, from Canaan, back to the camp. The children of Israel, you see, are, are still in the wilderness wondering. They're not far away, but they're still not in Canaan. But go check out the land. And what did they find? Oh, it was a rich land. A land that is sometimes described as flowing with milk and honey. It's a blessed land. Now, all of them could agree that it is a fruitful, prosperous land. It would be good if we could have it. And so they come back with this report to uh, Moses, and they tell Moses about the land and about the people, 
and how the people live and the, and the food supply. And so when you're sitting out in the wilderness of Paran, encamped as a large group of people, the idea that, that we could go into this land of Canaan and enjoy the prosperity of the land, that is appealing. What a wonderful thing to dream about, right? You know, I love to see people, especially young people, who dream and dream big. Young people in this room that could accomplish great things if they dream big and put their faith and trust in God. But how often is it true that, that we all are in agreement about the dream? Wouldn't this be wonderful if we could accomplish this. You see, uh, the problem becomes when we think about making it a reality, right? We forget about how great our God really is. I want our congregation here to, to consider our location and this property that surrounds us and to dream big. Don't stop with an addition. Fellowship hall and classrooms, keep dreaming big. And think how you can accomplish that dream because it can be done when you've got God on your side. Now when these spies came back and gave their report, they were all together about the dream. It is a prosperous land. The Valley of Eskel, the word Eskel means, means cluster. That's where they found all these clusters of grapes, but there's figs and pomegranates. And in those ancient cultures, the best way to know that you were blessed is to know that you were fed. I've gone into some parts of Asia before that were rather poverty stricken. And I've had some of those Asian people meet me and they would say something like this to me. Oh, Brother Grider, you're nice and fat. <laughs> I told a preacher friend of mine, I said, you know, over in America, we know whether or not we're nice and fat. We don't really like anybody telling us that, though. And this preacher told me this. He said, Brother Grider, let me say this. He said, that, at all, that was not at all meant disrespectfully toward you or to hurt your feelings. What is meant when they say you're fat, you're blessed. There are people who oftentimes don't have enough to eat. And when they see people who have meat on their bones, that's a sign of health, that's a sign of prosperity, that's a sign that you're blessed. Well, that was different. I didn't mind it then. These ancient peoples were looking for places where there was an abundance of food. And so it was in this land of Canaan. But here was the problem. All were agreed that it was a wonderful land, flowing with milk and honey, plenty to eat, a place where, yes, we could rest and enjoy all the blessings of God, but there's a problem according to the ten, ten, 10 of those 12 spies. The people over there are mighty. The walls of their cities are fortified. They're armed and dangerous, and not only that, there are giants all over that land. I think you see a little bit of exaggeration here because when people get scared, they tend to exaggerate, don't they? Well, they're giants throughout all the land, and we're not capable of going in there and taking this land. There are too many obstacles to overcome. But in reality, there was only one obstacle. And the one obstacle that stood between them and taking the land was a lack of faith. Because God was ready to go in and to fight for them and give them the land, and ultimately he would do so. But not with these people, not with them, because of their faithless attitude. Yet, thankfully, 
There are some who do live and walk and build by faith. Their names in this particular biblical account are Joshua and Caleb. And so notice again verse 30 that you heard a little while ago. Caleb quieted the people before Moses. Now why did Caleb have to do that? Because when the spies said that we can't go in and take these cities because they're so well fortified, evidently the crowd was crushed. When they heard that, there must have been a loud, loud sigh. Oh, this is a terrible report. We can't do this. What Caleb is saying, hush, listen to me. Caleb says, I want you to know that we should go up at once and take possession. For we are well able to overcome it. We can take this land. But then the men who'd gone up with him said, we're not able to go up against these people. For they're stronger than we are. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they'd spied out saying, We've gone through the land as spies. It's a land that devours its inhabitants. All the people we saw there are of great stature. Now, what they saw impressed them. What was found in the land they'd like to have, but they didn't have the faith to go in and take it. Building by faith always begins with a dream. Whatever it is you want to accomplish in the name of the Lord, then dream about it and seek to fulfill the dream. What would it be like to go in and possess the land? It would be wonderful. But a lack of faith says we cannot do it. On this occasion, what did these spies, the ten who had the negative report, what did they really say? What really occurred on that occasion when they said, we're not, we're not mighty enough, powerful enough to go in and take the land? We can't accomplish what Caleb and Joshua says we can accomplish. Here's what happened on that occasion, and it happens today. Facts won over faith because they were not telling a lie. Indeed, they were outnumbered, weren't they? There were more enemies in the land of Canaan who could come together and overwhelm the people of God. And yet, they're still the people of God. God is fighting on their side. But fear and facts won out over faith. Facts were outnumbered. Fear, they're mightier than we are. Friends won out over faith. There were all of these naysayers and the people joined in and believed the negative report because so many times people would rather listen to something negative and follow that which is negative. And then fiction won over faith. Not all the people in the land were giants. Maybe a few looked like mighty men, but not everybody. So that was overhyped. And then foes won out over faith. Did you know these people, the children of Israel, who had been so blessed by God, when they heard this report, were ready to go back to the bondage that's in Egypt? If you look at chapter 14 and you notice verses 2 through 4, all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, If only we died in the land of Egypt or died in the wilderness. In verses 3 or 4, some of them wanted to go on back to Egypt. And so faith even lost out to their foes. And here's the point of the message this morning, friends, and we take it from this particular section of Scripture. God's people never accomplished anything because it was easy. And there's a reason for that. God makes it abundantly clear that whatever we do that's to be for, for His cause... He gets the glory. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and notice in verse 27 
that the text says God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to the shame the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen, and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, so that no flesh should glory in His presence. When all is said and done, whatever is going to be accomplished on behalf of our God in heaven, He gets the glory. And therefore, nothing that is done on God's behalf is necessarily easy to accomplish. But Caleb and Joshua live, walk, and build by faith. Caleb understood that victory was within our grasp. How did he know that? Because he had a resource that the Canaanites who dwelt in the land didn't have, and that was God. Don't forget that. An instructor of Bible used to say to those of us who sat in his classes, God plus one is a majority. That's right, isn't it? Romans 8, 31, if God be for us, who can be against us? How could the children of Israel go in the land of Canaan and lose when God was on their side? And so listen to Joshua's speech. Back in Joshua chapter 14, listen to verse 6 where the text says, Joshua and Caleb who were among those who had spied out the land tore their clothes when they heard the, the, the children of Israel say, let's just go back to Egypt. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out, it is an exceedingly good land. And if the Lord delights in us, He will bring us into this land, and He will give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. That's the faith of Joshua and uh, Caleb. And so Psalm 37, 5 says, Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust in Him. And he will bring it to pass. And yet what happens so often, instead of stepping out by faith, people rebel. Verse 9, the text says, Do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land. Joshua and Caleb are saying, If you don't have the faith to go in and take this land which God has promised, no matter what, the facts may say, no matter what the foes may be, you're rebelling against God Himself. And so what happened? They rebelled against God. They didn't have the faith to go in and take the land. In fact, because of the words of Caleb and Joshua, they decided they wanted to, to stone them. They were so angry by their challenge of faith. So what happened? As a result of their lack of faith, the dream never did become a reality. Remember, it's a good thing to dream, but God gives us the resources we need to accomplish the dreams. But when we say something can't be done on behalf of our Lord, then that says something about our trust in Him and what He can accomplish. When you look at Josh, uh, rather Numbers chapter 14, verse 22, listen to these sobering words. They come from the Lord Himself. Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice, they certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers. Nor shall any of those who rejected me see it, but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him, and he has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit it. Who would go into the land of Canaan from this group? Only two, Joshua and Caleb. All others, twenty and older, would die in the wilderness. Faithlessness. If only they had trusted in God 
who had brought them with a mighty hand out of Egypt, who had fed them in the wilderness, who was leading them along. If only they'd kept trusting in Him, they could have gone right on in and taken the land and could have accomplished what, what Caleb said, we're well able to possess this land. We're well able to overcome our enemies. What is the dream of God today? The dream of God today is that all men hear, believe, and obey the gospel, isn't it? The dream of God today is that the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ will grow and flourish to the uttermost parts of the earth. And whatever it is that's the, that is the desire of God, that can be accomplished. And it can be accomplished through faith challenge this morning is this, do not let us in any way thwart that plan. Let's dream as a congregation and as the people of God. Let's dream and dream big because our God is big. How strong is your faith? You might ask, how big is your God? It will determine how strong is your, is your faith. Whatever God authorizes us to do, know this, He'll give us the resources we need to accomplish it. We've just got to believe it, have faith in Him, and do it. Nothing has ever been accomplished on behalf of our Lord that was necessarily easy. Because when all is said and done, He gets the glory. Nothing has ever been accomplished on behalf of our Lord Jesus that was not accomplished by faith in Him. And faith in Him meant, I trust, and therefore I do. And so, as the psalmist stated in Psalm 98, 1, God has done marvelous things. And you know that's true. We read about it in the Bible. We've studied great works that have been done in the name of our God in times past. And that's to encourage us to keep on building by faith. Question is, will we heed God's word and pay attention to the great works of the past and let that motivate us to keep on doing those things that bring glory and honor to God? He's still a builder. He's still ready to work. And He's ready to work through you and me. I don't know about you, but in whatever time I have left here on this earth, I want to see more and more and more accomplished. It brings glory and honor to the God of heaven. And you know what? We can do it if we build by faith. Don't we want more Joshua and Caleb's? I've read those names of the 10 spies that are found there in Numbers 13, but I've never, I've never studied them to the point that I've memorized them <laughs> because they just don't impress me. And God is not impressed by faithless people. But when there are those like Joshua and Caleb who say we can go in and take the land as if they've already possessed it, God will work through those people and accomplish much. May we be like Joshua and Caleb and build by faith. I pray this morning that someone here will step out by faith and repent of past sins and be baptized for the remission of sins in accordance with the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything we do, you see, from becoming a Christian to remaining faithful, we do because of faith. Faith in God's plan of salvation will lead the alien sinner to come to Christ in His appointed way. And as we walk with God each day, it is our faith that strengthens us, and draws us closer to Him, and that ultimately will take us to heaven. Is your faith strong this morning? Do we have the faith of a Joshua and Caleb 
that can not only dream big, but also trust in our God to accomplish the dream to make it a reality. I pray that we do. If you're subject to heaven's invitation, won't you come? Let's stand and sing.